Next, we've got Dr. Carol Shields. She'll be talking about uh, management of pigmented iris lesions. When should I worry? Thank you. I, ha I serve on the advisory board for Aura Biosciences, which is involved with uveal melanoma. So pigmented iris lesions, when should I worry? We did an analysis of 3,680 iris tumors, published this in the journal Ophthalmology 2012. And in that analysis, we found melanocytic tumors were by far the most common tumors of the iris. In fact, they represented 70% of all iris tumors. So I have a lot to talk about in eight min minutes. So I'll talk to you about freckles, lish nodules, nev nevus, melanocytoma, melanocytosis, and melanoma. Let's begin with iris freckles. I know all of us blow off iris freckles. Here you see a patient with multiple iris freckles. They tend to be flat. They rest on the surface of the iris. They can be multifocal and bilateral, and they tend to occur most often in blue eyes. So who gets iris freckles? With this analysis by Kleiman et al., 1985, AJO, found that patients at risk for iris freckles in an analysis of 213 patients were those with light irides. So your blue and green-eyed patients are at risk for iris freckles. Could iris freckles be a biomarker of sun exposure? Well, this question was answered by the team um, in, uh, in Europe, in Austria. Dermatologists and ophthalmologists worked together. They had 632 volunteers, mean age of 38 years. 76% of patients had one or more iris freckles, mostly infrotemporally, and they found iris freckles were associated with older age, more sunburn, more sun-damaged skin, more skin freckles, and greater skin total nevus count. So sun exposure can trigger formation of iris freckles, and iris freckles could be a biomarker for sun damage of the skin and risk for skin malignancy. Next, just a few words on Lish nodules. I think all of you could recognize Irish, iris Lish nodules, most often seen in neurofibromatosis type 1. This is a melanocytic hamartoma. I have never seen one of these transform into melanoma. This is considered one of the most common findings of NF1, along with choroidal freckling, and these generally do not grow. Nevis. Nevis is also fairly common. It distorts the iris stroma. It can produce minor dusting of pigment on the stroma or in the angle. They can be pigmented or non-pigmented and lead to corectopia and ectropion. Here you see some corectopia. Most nevi occur in the inferior half of the iris, and we speculate this is related to sun exposure. Here you see an example of a pigmented nevus and a non-pigmented nevus. An example of corectopia and pretty marked ectropion overlying a nevus. This does not signify malignant transformation. Can an iris nevus, though, signify other ocular disease? Ezekiel Weiss from Vancouver worked with our team and looked at the association of cutaneous and iris nevi with uveal melanoma. And he found in a meta-analysis of four studies, 825 cases, that iris nevus promoted a relative risk of 1.53 for uveal melanoma. So dilate those eyes that have iris nevi. Can iris nevi cause vision loss? Not likely. Glaucoma? Maybe if it's a melanocytoma. How about malignancy? Yes, there's a 2% rate of transformation of iris nevi to melanoma. Let's say a, a word or two on melanocytoma. This is a specific form of iris nevus. It's a homogeneously dark brown mass on the iris, also known as magnocellular nevus. It's granular, and the iris and the angle can have secondary seeding with glaucoma. Demerci et al., when he was working with us and our team, we looked at iris melanocytoma. We found 23% do show a little evidence of growth, but really growth into melanoma, less than 1% of cases. The problem with melanocytoma is they seed the iris stroma and into the angle with a risk for melanocytomalytic glaucoma. And Mitch Feynman et al. published on this in four cases, melanocytomalytic glaucoma. Very difficult to treat. This occurs from this discohesive tumor seeding into the trabecular mesh work and causing an occlusive glaucoma. 
Let's say a word or two about ocular melanocytosis. This is a pigmentary condition that can occur on the sclera and the iris and the ciliary body and the choroid. It's congenital. It can be complete, involving the entire eye, or it can all be sectoral and just involve a little sector of the eye. It's estimated that the risk for melanoma in an eye with this condition is 1 in 400. It's a small risk for melanoma. But here's one case of a child who had sector melanocytosis and developed a melanoma, as shown there, at the yellow arrow. You've got to follow these patients at least once a year. Last, a few words about iris melanoma. We generally diagnose iris melanoma when we have a pigmented lesion on the iris that shows documented growth. That's how we generally diagnose melanoma. But it can be related to extensive seeding on the iris and in the angle, and melanoma can be recognized at first visit by large size, more than three clock hours. Often we will confirm with fine needle aspiration biopsy for cytology and or cytogenetics before treating with uh, radiotherapy or any other therapy. So how often does iris nevus convert to melanoma? About 2% overall. And how do I know that? Well, we looked at 1,611 consecutive eyes of iris nevus following these eyes for growth into melanoma. And we found that using Kaplan-Meier analysis, 3% show growth at 5 years and 11% by 20 years. So iris nevi do need to be followed. And we found six risk factors that predict iris nevus transformation into melanoma. We call them the ABCDEF guide. We use this every day in our practice. ABCDEF, A stands for age under 40 years, B for blood, hyphema, C for clock hour inferiorly, D for diffuse configuration, E for ectropion, yes, that's a risk, and F for feathery margin. And you can see the hazard ratio can be pretty profound with some of these risk factors. Here are some examples of iris nevus growth to melanoma. On the top panel, relatively innocuous looking lesion, but it did grow and we had to treat. And on the bottom panel, a very small amelanotic lesion that did grow and required radiotherapy. How common is iris melanoma? In an analysis of 8,000 patients with uveal melanoma, iris melanoma represented only 4%. It's the rarest form of melanoma that we see and it has the best behavior. At five years, the risk for metastasis is only 5%, and at 20 years, the risk for metastasis only 11%. And prognosis is better in children than in adults. Fine needle aspiration biopsy is critical for these iris lesions whenever there's a question. We always use a 27 or 30 gauge needle connected to a connector tubing and a 10 cc syringe entering at the limbus and going directly into the tumor to obtain cells for cytology or cytogenetics. Last, you should know that iris melanoma does have an AJCC classification. I don't have time to go into that at this point, but it is predictive of risk for metastatic disease. So in the past eight minutes, we've covered iris freckle, no worries. Iris nevus, generally no worries unless you have hyphema. Could be evolution into melanoma. Melanocytoma, watch for secondary glaucoma. Melanocytosis, watch for uveal melanoma. Lish nodules associated with NF1 and melanoma, you got to watch out for metastatic disease. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shields.